Taylor, I want to get your quick thoughts on Tatis because he's got some really good MVP odds. Have you placed a bet on him winning the MVP this year? It's funny you ask because I did earlier. Um, he's actually the one in the NL that I think I have the most units on. Um, mm-hmm. I got him at plus 1400 a couple months ago. And then wow. just a few days ago, I added another little another little sprinkle in it, plus 1000. I put another half unit on him uh, nice. just because I, I, I looked at more of his numbers and looked at some of the quotes Oof. he's been putting out and was like, man, yeah. okay, you, you're, you're selling me. Um, and you the, know this is kind of a, this is a big year for uh, MVP futures because Shohei is going to wreck it when he when he starts he's pitching be back next year. Yeah, it's uh, so one of those leagues. It's like you kind of you're any MV, M, any MVP futures bet you put down, you're basically betting the first bet is that Shohei is not going to be healthy uh, because mm-hmm. otherwise no one else is going to win it, and then the second bet is who's going to win MVP. So you kind of have two layers right. of things. to there so this is a big year for for mvp future so i'm trying to take advantage of it while i can no doubt and i I, you talked about it with tatis's numbers if you haven't seen tatis's numbers or you think he's overrated or whatever the case may be like go to his baseball reference and you'll see the only reason he hasn't won an mvp yet is because he hasn't been playing full seasons like his numbers when he's on the field are you know top of the line like top five player MVP type numbers always, you know? So he is a ridiculously good baseball player that I think a lot, a lot of that gets overshadowed because of the personality, but that guy can play dude. Like do not sleep on him. Yeah. And he's coming into this year a lot more mature. Uh, That's the big thing that he's been talking about is like, I need to be smarter with my decisions so I can stay on the field. That's his. And he seems very, very determined. He was very, he was disappointed that he let his team down last year. He recognized the mistakes that he's made in the past have affected his teammates and he's actively done stuff to change that. And uh, his floor is a 30, 30 season and his ceiling is whatever he wants it to be. Honestly, like he's already won a platinum glove. He could easily, he's got, I mean, 50 home run power easily. Uh, Like he can do basically whatever he wants. And one of the things I've been finding out about him is his approach has gotten a lot more mature along with his personality. His first year, he had a lot of whiff concerns, especially with sliders. You look at his Mm -hmm. run values versus different types of pitches uh, in his big season, it was all fastballs. He was doing all of his damage on fastballs. He had like a 17 run value. And then when you look at sliders, it was it was not good. It was like somewhere between zero and negative five. And then you look at the way that's changed since then, a lot less whiff on sliders, a lot better batting average batting average on sliders, more hard hits on sliders. So he's actively finding his weaknesses and and making adjustments. And his K rate went down from last year, so there's a lot less swing and miss. He's hitting the ball up the middle more, which is a big thing that sold me. It's just all these little signs that he's developing a more advanced approach at the plate. And that combined with the fact that he wasn't even you know totally healthy last year. There was so much drama in San Diego this year. He's now taking all of that into this next season where he's going to be healthy. He's got this more advanced approach and he has all the motivation in the world. Like the, you could see, I, I believe him. I think you could see a historic season from this guy this year. When I was in college in 2019, we got the, uh, the, the amazing opportunity to go to Padre spring training in, uh, in, I don't, I believe it was Peoria. I don't remember which city in Arizona it was, but we got to go to spring training and that was when Tatis was a rookie coming up. He was, he was, he was the number one prospect in baseball and I got to be on the field watching him hit BP, like the turtle on the field. I was right behind the turtle watching him hit BP and Hunter Renfro was there too. And Hunter Renfro hits some of the furthest balls that I've ever seen in my life. It's different coming off Tatis's bat. Like it, it's like, it sounds like there's gunshots going on around. Like that's how loud it is when Fernando Tatis Jr. hits the ball. So he was, and he's like what people didn't see either. Like he was an awesome dude. Like a couple of my teammates were uh, Venezuelan. They were speaking Spanish. He walked over to them. He signed a couple of bats for him. He was talking to him, chopping it up with him for a little while. Like it was like, he's a super cool dude. So I think people get it twisted with Fernando Tatis Jr. Just because he's so polarizing, but the guy is awesome. And his yeah. talent is absolutely ridiculous. So if you guys are, are, you know, for some reason, a Tatis hater because of everything he, he, you know, all the kind of drama he's brought in, you know, it's understandable to a it. certain extent, but get past it. Like the guy is one of the most electric baseball players you are ever going to see. And if you get past that and just enjoy watching him play baseball, you're going to have a hell of a lot of fun this year because he's going to have some great moments this year.